the burden removing yoke destroying power of God is living in me the mystery of the gospel is Christ in me Christ in me mystery of the gospel is Christ in me What is this divine revelation that Jesus had? I said because of the knowledge that Jesus had, he destroyed, we saw last Sunday, the book of Isaiah 53, he destroyed Satan. Because of the blessing, Jesus saw what Father did. Jesus said what Father said. Jesus did what Father did. You remember in the book of John chapter 8, John chapter 12, John chapter 14. You can put up those verses. You can show them. In these verses, we see Jesus making these strong statements. Jesus says, I only say what Father says. I only do what Father does. I only see what Father says. That means... Jesus was connected to the Father. He had the divine revelation. He had a hearing ear. You remember the prayer of Solomon? He asked for a hearing ear. He wanted to hear the knowledge of God. He wanted to hear God. He wanted to know the wisdom of God. And God blessed him with the knowledge, with honor, with wealth, with all the blessings. And Jesus had this knowledge, this divine revelation. That's why in the book of John, it says, for I have not spoken on my own authority, but the father who sent me gave me a command for I should say what I should speak. Jesus said what father said. Are you able to relate? Because Jesus had this divine revelation, he had the knowledge, wisdom, understanding. He had the rhema word. Whatever father would speak now, Jesus would speak. When the Pharisees would come to entangle him with his words, Jesus had very wise answer to give. Jesus always said what father said. And we see Jesus did, the next verse, Jesus did what Father did. But I do as the Father has commanded me. Jesus did what Father did. When you have the blessing of dew of heaven, what is the meaning of this? You will say what Father said, what Father God said to you. You will do what Father God said to you. Very powerful. Whatever Father God, whatever Daddy God tells you for your every day-to-day life, you listen, you have a hearing ear. You listen and you do it. Whatever Father God tells you to do, take up that job, you take up. Don't attend that interview, you do it. Father God tells you, don't marry that girl, you do it. Father God tells you, go here for worship, you do it. Father God speaks to you. You have a direct line, no mediator in between. This call center has no telecallers in between to transfer the call. No pastors, no evangelists, no mediator in between, no prophets you need in between. This is a direct line with the Father, direct lifeline. You talk to the Father, you have a divine revelation. Call unto me. I will answer you at any time. The phone call is not busy. It is always available. It is never out of order throughout the clock, throughout the year, 24 bar 7. You can reach the father and he tells you every small details, every small clarification you need. God, what medicine should I take? for this problem. Doctors are unable to diagnose. God, which job can I do? How I can grow? What is my calling? Father God tells you. Father God tells you. That is divine revelation. That is the wisdom. That is the knowledge which Jesus had. That is the dew of heaven. We saw the scripture interpreting scripture in Deuteronomy 32 and Proverbs 3 where it says the wisdom and the doctrine and the teaching of God are the dew of heaven. Amen. Now to give you more insight on 
what is d of heaven so that you never forget it is a hearing ear it is a divine revelation i want you to go to another story two powerful stories a very short story is the story of elijah the tishbite first kings chapter 17 the one verse you can show them elijah comes to king ahab and elijah says there will be no rain no dew for the next 3 years elijah tells this to the king the moment elijah tells this now elijah the tishbite in gilead said to ahab as the lord the god of israel lives before whom i stand there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except my word but i do as the father has commanded me who also did this jesus i told you jesus did what father did and here elijah says i do what father did and there's one more person in the new testament who said do as i say do as i do apostle paul he said just do what i do why because he is hearing the father and he is doing and elijah is telling there will be no word that means if there is no dew what is not there there is no revelation of the word if there is no dew there is no revelation of the word all of you when devil wants to steal your marriage your finances your health anything he tries to steal from you you know the first thing that he tries to steal the first thing he steals is he steals the dew he steals the word he steals the revelation he is okay you fast for 40 days but he is not okay if you have the divine revelation of god's word he's okay that you kneel down and you pray for 12 hours with unbelief but he is not okay if you get the rema word of god if you get the divine revelation you know why the, there is no opposition against revelation because with that knowledge jesus destroyed satan and with that knowledge you will destroy the works of the enemy in your life so he is not okay he will make sure that you fast more you pray more in unbelief you do all the rituals you do all the legalistic things but he will stop you from receiving the knowledge and understanding of his word because when there is no word there is no dew there is no blessing there is no manifestation of healing there is no manifestation of plenty there is no manifestation of fatness of earth because the dew of heaven is the key to it so here elijah says no dew of heaven for the next 3 years that means there is there shall be no word of the lord and he goes away so dew of heaven is related to the word of god the speech of god last sunday we saw the hebrew word imra the utterance of god what god spoke rema word the spoken word of god so let's see a beautiful story the book of judges chapter 6 it's the story of gideon there was a person by name gideon now gideon was from the tribe of Manasseh now god speaks to gideon now god sends the angel to attend to gideon listen to this beautiful story all of you pay attention now gideon is threshing the wheat they were farmers those days they were no software engineers <laughs> right they were farming so he takes the wheat and he's threshing the wheat where not in the open field generally wheat is segregated clean in a open field but gideon is hiding in a wine press where wine is made a closed place he is hiding from midianites so midianites were the enemies of israel at that time so because israel had disobeyed and worshiped idols god had given over to midianites so midianites amalekites and the people from the east all the neighboring kingdoms were against israel so whenever these people would get the harvest whenever they got the harvest these amalekites midianites would come to destroy the harvest little foxes spoil the wine they come and they destroy 
are you able to relate when you receive your bonus when you receive your salary when you receive your finances you see there is hospital bill unplanned accident unplanned bills unplanned requirement that comes up and then the harvest is destroyed the midianites the amalekites and people from east they come so now gideon is hiding in wine press and he is harvesting the wheat he is so afraid that they will come and take away the harvest and destroy for 7 years this was happening judges chapter 6 you can do the homework when this was happening he was so down fearful depressed left felt abandoned he had heard about god of israel but he did not knew much because his own father was worshiping idols his father was worshiping the gods of baal so he was like i heard of god who saved us from egyptians but nothing much is happening and he is in fear at that time the angel of the lord appears to gideon and the angel tells to gideon gideon the mighty man of wala i have given midianites into your hand you are going to defeat them you are going to fight this battle why the angel came to gideon because at that time people turned to god and they seeked his help they cried to the lord capital l o r d they cried to the lord and they said god you are the real god el shaddai elohim we seek you help us how beautiful it is the cry of the righteous always falls on the ears of the father he is attentive to the cry of righteous every time you cry to the lord his ears are attentive to you immediately he sent help he sent the angel to talk to gideon and say gideon i am going to save through your hand see god is a spirit he needs a hand he needs a tongue he needs a body you are his body amen so he says gideon you are the body yes go ahead give god the glory receive it receive it when you say amen when when you clap you know what you're sending signal to your body you're sending signal that this word is for me you're receiving it it's not falling in your ears it's falling deep down in your heart that's very important so now gideon is fearful an angel says i'm going to uh, deliver people into your hands and what gideon responds to that i really like this part gideon says it me have you chosen me angel i think you do not know let me give you my background my background is i am from the tribe of manessa and i am the least one in the family you have chosen me to destroy the people i want you to read that the scripture Josh, uh, judges chapter 6 The Lord turned to him and said, "Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord." Gideon replied, "But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family." Is there anyone who has this response, <laughs> like Gideon? See, Gideon did not doubt the ability of God. He said, "God." I know you can. I know you are almighty, but I doubt that you will use me. I doubt that you love me. I know you are a loving God, but do you love me enough? I know you do miracles, testimonies I hear from many. I know you are wonder working God, but will you do the wonder to me? So Gideon is saying, I am from the tribe of Manessa. what is the meaning last sunday i told jacob gave blessing greater blessing to ephraim and manessa was the first born who received least blessing so the, the blessing of god stood and generations passed by after generations passed by it so happened ephraim became a strong tribe and manessa became a least tribe now he is saying i am from manessa i am from the least tribe of manessa i actually don't deserve the blessing of dew of heaven i am not a jew father god i am a gentile i don't deserve the blessing i am not a born christian 
I am from a unbeliever, non-Christian family. Will I really lead your people? Do I have the hearing here? That's what he is asking. Am I the one you have chosen from the tribe of Manasseh? I'm the least one in my family. Probably he's not the first one in the family. <laughs> the least one in the family. And what God tells. What a beautiful answer God gives. Next verse. You read it for yourself. Verse 16. The Lord answered, I will be with you. <laughs> I will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. The answer to that, if, if any of you tells, God, I am from the least of the family. I have no qualification. I have no background. I have no experience. I have no ability. I am from a non-Christian background. I don't know the God of the Bible as much as everyone else. I am from the tribe of Manasseh, the least in the family. The answer to that God gives is, I will go with you. I am with you. That's more than enough. I am with you. You don't need qualifications, degrees, background, titles, experience, or a large army. All you need, the Almighty God Himself goes with you. If the Lord is on our side, who shall be against us? If the Lord is by my side, you and God are a majority. Amen. You and God are a majority. God says, I am with you, Gideon. I will go with you. So he says, am I really listening to God? Is it my own conscience? Am I dreaming? Am I seeing some devil? Am I listening to somebody else? I'm not sure. Am I listening to you, God? Let me just uh, get you one uh, offering and one test I will give you to, sh to know that you are the one. He says, wait, please wait. The end, he tells the angel, please wait. I will go and prepare an um, offering. I'll prepare an offering and bring it to you. You take it, then I know you are from God. So what now Gideon does? He runs and goes and what he brings. Shall we see? Go to the verse 17. Gideon replied, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. He's saying, it is you. Are you? He's, it's unbelievable for him that God is talking to him. Sometimes it happens, right? It's unbelievable. God, have you chosen me? Am I the one? Am I the one? So the next verse, what he gets? He gets the offering to the Lord, verse 18. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering. And I set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. God said, I will wait until you return. How many of you made Jesus your Lord many, many years ago? And the Lord waited until you return to forgiven generation. <laughs> the Lord said, I will wait. I will wait until you return. How many years back you said, Jesus, you're the love of my life. And you ran away. You, 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 had, you, you, you backslid. The troubles and the difficulties pushed you far from God. And God said, I will wait until you return. What a good God we serve. He's unchanging. He did this to Gideon. He did this to every one of us. Today we are seated here. Today you're watching online because the Lord waited. The Lord waited. He believed best in you. He hoped best. When nobody believed in you, when you did not believe in yourself, the Lord said, I will wait for you until you return. He hoped best in you. When you were in the making, when you were not the finished product, yet the Lord said, I will wait until you return. What a God. How much of patience he has because of his long suffering, because of his patience. Today, we have returned. Amen. We have returned and never, never turning back from his love, from his word. Amen. So now, Gideon uh, runs and he goes and what he brings, you can show them the next verse. Gideon went inside, prepared a young goat Please repeat, young goat. He prepared a young goat. And from an ephah of flour, he made bread without yeast, putting the meat in a basket and a broth in a pot. He brought them out and offered them to him under the yoke. What did Gideon bring? He brought the goat, young goat, and 
unleavened bread what are these two things what are these two things the five offering that god gave to moses at the time of exodus every five offering each offering represents the work of jesus represents jesus himself the grain offering the meal offering the sin offering the trespass offering the offering that gideon brought the young goat was his sin offering the trespass offering he said i will bring a young goat which is the picture of the lamb of god he said i come before you i bring young goat and i bring unleavened bread jesus who is without sin the unleavened bread offering he bought when he brought angel of the lord touched and the fire of the lord came and gideon got to know fine the lord has chosen me the lord has chosen me to deliver my people now the story continues now what happens next now he's supercharged he believes that god has called him and finally he sees not through the eyes of the father but through his eyes what he sees now the israelites are in the camp in the valley below valley of jezreel the midianites the amalekites and the people from the east all the enemies come and gather in the valley and gideon and the people see <laughs> there are so many in number and now gideon is afraid he is like god they are too many the entire israel army is too sh- small to fight against this three huge army that has come against he says are you really going to give me a plan are you really going to speak to me do i have the divine revelation so he puts a fleece he says i want one more sign that you are talking to me so now what gideon does show them the next chapter what gideon does the sign of the fleece then gideon said to god if you will save israel by my hand as you have said behold i am laying a fleece of wool on the threshing floor if there is dew on the fleece alone and it is dry on all the ground then i shall know that you will save israel by my hand as you have said verse number 38 and it was so when he rose early next morning and squeezed the fleece he wrung enough dew from the fleece to fill a bowl with water was 39 then gideon said to god let not your anger burn against me let me speak just once more please let me test just once more with the fleece please let it be dry on the fleece only and all the ground let there be dew and god did so that night and it was dry on the fleece only and all the ground there was dew two times gideon asked for a sign he told god are you really going to deliver people from my hand so he takes a fleece what is a fleece it is a piece of a material which is made of a wool of sheep it is so strong that it will protect the sheep from cold weather so he takes the fleece and he says god if you are talking to me then let there be dew on the fleece and rest of the ground be dry so next day morning the fleece was soaked up with so much of dew and when he squeezed a bowl full of water came out and then he says wait 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 i think already the fleece was wet so something has gone wrong he said god one more sign this time let the fleece be dry and the ground be full so god says okay the fleece is dry and the ground is full of dew now what's the meaning and understanding this is ppa commentary <laughs> the meaning is dew is divine revelation it is a doctrine it is knowledge it is understanding it is wisdom why i keep repeating because it is so much deep i don't want you to miss out and lose the connection so now when gideon is asking god is there dew on the fleece he's saying am i really listening to you do i have the revelation 
have i got the knowledge the wisdom the plan the understanding to fight this army out there i am not a military officer i don't know any military strategy i want your plan your idea your wisdom have i received your plan your strategy to fight the battle am i listening to you i want to be sure that i'm listening to you so i want to know the due what is what does due represent due represents divine revelation so he's saying have i really received the due am i listening to you so god says yes gideon you are listening to me i am giving you divine revelation then the next the day he says let the fleece be dry so god says yes you are listening to me you have received the dew you are listening to me i am the one talking to you so now that gideon gets the clarity that god is talking to gideon he is now sure the dew of heaven is his that is the clarity i gave to every one of you last sunday i told you the dew of heaven is yours because of what jesus did you don't have to doubt the dew of heaven is yours you have to place your faith in jesus and say dew of heaven is mine it is mine i am hearing god i am his sheep and i hear his voice i have the knowledge understanding from heaven so he says i am listening now what idea he gets see this idea no human can plan the whole army is there to fight now gideon plans what gideon plans he takes 32000 army men and he goes for the battle and god calls gideon come he has hearing ear he says yes lord what are you saying you have too many people can you send some of them he says okay and he says all those who are fearful you may leave now 22000 people leave and they say fine bye bye gideon we are very afraid to fight this army we don't want to die and they run away now how many are left 10000 then gideon is marching forward and again god says gideon come here he hears because now he has dew of heaven hearing ear he says what god you still have so many people gideon 10000 people i don't want people to say they they won the war with the with their strength with their arm now reduce the people i'll give you a plan he said okay god he says he brings them and they are very thirsty and god tells a plan tell them to drink the water out of 10000 people 300 people drink the water they lap like dogs and the other 9700 they kneel down bend and drink the water again god says gideon come here He says here I am Lord I have a hearing here I know I know that you speak to me I know when you speak He says what is it Lord tell the 9700 to go I want only the 300 who laughed like dogs That itself is another revelation I'm not having time to explain that it is the one who is so hungry for god's word in one sentence the one who laps the water like a dog the one who is drinking over and over how many of you are listening to god's word day and night and saying i want more i want more of god's word god says he is the one i need amen so he said take those 300 people he takes the 300 people and he says now you go now what is the strategy gideon come here then gideon goes tell them to drop the spear sword javelin knife all the armory and tell them to go with what go with trumpet ram's horn see today we have fancy trumpets right fancy trumpets the music team has but at that time thousands of years ago there was no fancy trumpet they will break the horn of a ram if there is horn of a ram that means what the ram is dead okay that's the trumpet that's that's a revelation so the horn of a ram is there he says take the trumpet and they take the trumpet and in the other hand pitcher that is a earthen clay pot jar take the pitcher and a torch that's all these three things to fight the battle how am i going to fight the battle with the horn am i going to blow them that they became they become deaf and run away god what are you telling me 
i'm taking the clay jar if i hit them it is going to break into pieces and what is this light going to do god says do as i say the plan the strategy what god gives is not like the world gives the wisdom of the world is different from the wisdom of the word amen god says he uses the foolish to shame the wise and he uses the weakest to shame the strong so god says my idea is totally different come gideon come so he says okay god and he takes the 300 people with what three things the trumpet the uh clay j- j- jar of clay and the torch and he divides the 300 into three groups show them the next verse the midianites the amalekites and all the other eastern people had settled in the valley thick as locust their camels could no more be counted than the sand on the seashore they were huge in number and how many are fighting with this huge number 300 men go to the next verse then the three companies the 300 men are now further divided into 100 100 now this 300 men are surrounding this huge army and what are they doing let's all read this together then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitcher they held the torches in their left hand and the trumpets in their right hand for blowing and they cried the sword of the lord and of gideon amen next verse what happened when the 300 blew the trumpets the lord set every man's sword against his companion throughout the whole camp and the army fled to beth and the went to other places they scattered and they ran away so what happened now this 100 men the three groups encamped and what they had the pitcher and they blew the ram's horn now let me explain blowing the ram's horn is called blowing the shofar gideon had what my dear people the dew of heaven what is dew of heaven the divine revelation of god because of the divine revelation when you have the divine revelation what is the first revelation you will have you will have the revelation of blowing of the shofar you will have revelation of ram's horn what is that in today's new covenant language it is proclaim the lord's death when you proclaim lord's death you are proclaiming the sound of victory in the tents of righteous amen you are saying i proclaim the lord's death before i see victory before i defeat this huge army i celebrate my victory god told in the new covenant proclaim the lord's death do this as often as you can when you are going through sickness when you are going through pain when you are going through poverty when you are going through delay setback depression when you have midianites amalekites and allites surrounding you coming around you and camping you when you feel surrounded all over god says you cannot fight with swords or javelin or spear or with your strength or ability or your mind just take up the victory horn take up the holy communion and blow the shofar when you blow the shofar when you blow the sound of the trumpet there is confusion in enemies camp there is confusion in enemy's camp because they're confused what's happening i am surrounding like locust i have come around to destroy them and they are celebrating and rejoicing every time you blow shofar you are taking holy communion you know what you are doing you are reminding satan of his humiliating death on the cross of calvary you are saying i blow the shofar how i win my battles i blow the shofar i proclaim the lord's death i raise my victory cup by taking communion cup and i say jesus died jesus died every right of satan on me on my family is forever denied i blow the shofar learn to blow the shofar in the worst situation learn to place your faith in the blood of jesus learn to place your faith in the lamb of god who was the sacrifice in your place so they blew the trumpet the moment they blew the trumpet they fought among themselves and they all killed each other 
and the number was very few and they fled in the dawn of the day when they realized that they have killed each other and the jar that they had they broke they broke the sound that it created it has such a beautiful meaning see all this is pp a commentary you will not find this this is the divine revelation that god has given to me to share with the world this has transformed my life and i'm so hungry to share with every one of you so that you will experience the victory that he has given you in your life in your children in your family because i am experiencing that victory amen so he says let's break the jar what is the jar according to me it is us the body always the earthen clay is the human body as per the new covenant it had to be broken that means i no longer live you have to die you should not have ego you should be like a dead body when you say it's not my desire it's not my will it's not my plan i no longer live the picture has to be broken when the picture is broken the light that is shining inside of you this little light of mine let it shine how will this little light of mine that is in me which is no longer a little light which is a huge son of god s u n which is s o n the son of god which is inside of me will shine brighter the more the jar gets broken the more you die then the light will shine brighter if little bit it is dead then the little ray of light will come out then another piece is broken then another light of light of god will shine the more the jar is broken into pieces the light will shine brighter amen so shines brighter so you must die to yourself as apostle paul says i no longer live so now he he died he was so afraid i cannot do it i am the weakest i have no talent i am not a army leader i cannot do it then finally he says all the man should shout the sword show them that verse it says their left hand and the trumpets in their right hand for blowing and they cried shall we all read that together they cried the sword of the lord and of gideon what they cried the sword of the lord they all shouted only one slogan what was the slogan the sword of the lord forgiven generation what is the sword of the lord <laughs> the word of god is the word of the lord so when you are in the battle what is the voice what is the word that comes of uh, comes out of you not ayyo what happened <laughs> the slogan that should come out is the word of the lord you must not say what you feel you must not say what you see you must say what is written the word of the lord should come out when you see sickness in your baby don't say oh my god what happened today no the word of the lord should come out the children of righteous are mighty in the land the word of the lord should come out when you are in pain when you are in sickness when you are in trouble the word of the lord has to come out whenever the word of the lord by the shout where there is shout that's when jericho walls came trembling where there was shout midianites army got destroyed when there was shout of jehoshaphat all the ites that were coming against they killed themselves from where do you think jehoshaphat got the idea he got it from gideon the story of jehoshaphat happened after gideon so he got the idea from gideon how did gideon get it gideon got it from the divine revelation because he knew the dew of heaven was his let the sword of the lord come you remember gideon started off telling i am the weakest of menessa i am nobody i am nothing i am a sinner i am weak i cannot do it now all of a sudden the sword of the lord came and he told everybody say loudly the sword of the lord and of gideon he said i begin to embrace my calling i am not going to say i am a sinner i am going to say i am the righteousness of god i am not going to say i am the weakest of menessa i am going to say i am the strongest tribe of israel because the lord is with me he changed the word he embraced his call he said god has delivered the enemy into my hands because the lord is with me amen he embraced his call so what happened when he embraced the call they got killed they got destroyed and 
Gideon saw the light shining brighter, the enemy fled out of fear, and one powerful verse. Show them, Judges 7, let's go to 22. We saw the 300 blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against companion. The army that was like locust, it was an impossible situation, right? It's an impossible situation. Do you feel like that sometimes? It's impossible death that is mounted around me. It's impossible sickness in my body. It's impossible sickness in my child. It is impossible like the Midianites around me. God is telling, let the clay break. Stop relying on your strength. Come to end of yourself and say, I cannot make it happen. It's the best place to be. When you say, I break the picture, and, I, and you say, God, I rely on you. I raise the victory cup. I blow the shofar. I blow the trumpet. When he did this, what happened? Show the next beautiful verse. And they captured two princes of Midianites, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they killed at the winepress of Zeb. Could you please repeat after me? Two princes of Midianites. Who were they? Oreb and Zeb. Oreb and Zeb. See, every scripture is without, uh, um, without a reason. It's not put over there. Every scripture has a purpose. Nothing is accident by God. When you read the stories, just don't rush. When you're reading your Bible, don't say, today I have to finish one page. I have to finish one chapter. Tuck, 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 and then close the Bible. Over, God. Now my, my job is over with you. You don't disturb me. I don't disturb you. <laughs> That's not how we do things. He's always with you. He loves your company. You enjoy him as much as he does. So when you're reading, don't read in rush. It says, the two princes of Midianites, Oreb and Zeb. I have such a beautiful revelation on this. What is the meaning of Oreb? Oreb, the meaning of the word Oreb is raven, crow, raven. And Zeb is wolf. There were two enemies. The princes, they were the head of Midians. They were hiding. Where does raven hide? They were hiding in the rock. When you go and see, when the Lord arises, his enemy gets scattered. And the birds, the ravens, which are hiding in the rock, they get scattered. So when the shofar was blown, the moment shofar is blown, the hidden raven in the rock came to light. The wolf, zeb, the meaning of zeb is wolf. The wolf was hiding in the wine press. Wolf is always behind the wine. Right? Wolf wants the wine. Why? He wants to destroy the wine. What is that? The little foxes destroy the wine. God has a great plan for you. For your life, for your children, for your family. These little foxes, these little wolves are coming and destroying your wine. They're destroying your health, destroying your finances, destroying your family. Why? Because you're ignorant of them. The only power the enemy has right now is the power of deception. Because of your ignorance, you do not know where he is hiding. He is hiding in the rocks. The raven is hiding in the rocks and the wolf is hiding in the wine press. You do not know the prince of Midianite is hiding. When the shofar is blown, when you take the victory cup, the snake that is hidden in your house and you cannot search it and find where it is in my house, where it is in my blood, where it is in my body. Doctors are not able to diagnose this. Doctors are not able to give me a solution. The wolf and the raven is hidden in your blood, in your body, in your DNA. It has come in there through some ignorance, through some inroad of Satan. He has come in there in the family. And you are like, I do not know how to fight this Midianite and the princes of the Midianites. The Bible says, this Oreb and Zeb who were hiding were brought to light. 
and the people of Ephraim came to support the tribe of Manasseh and all of Israel. They went and killed them. What is the meaning? When you take the divine revelation of God, God will give you the specific knowledge, specific understanding to destroy the Oreb that is hiding in your business, to destroy the Oreb and Zeb that is trying to destroy your harvest. God will give you the specific revelation to destroy the Oreb that is hiding in your blood, in your family, in your marriage. Whatever is hiding, when you take the communion, when you get the revelation of the sun, when you have the dew of heaven, with that revelation, like Gideon, you will say, I have the dew of heaven on my fleece. I hear the father. I know what father is telling. And father guides your footsteps. And you go step by step. And you exactly encounter the, your rave and zeb. And you pluck him out from the roots. And you cast him into the fire and you f get victory and you receive complete victory they defeated Midianites but the prince of Midianites were also defeated amen are you able to relate so anything that is hiding it is destroyed are you able to receive what a powerful truth. So receive this dew of heaven. So today I'm going to pray over you. You can receive and say, God, I have this dew of heaven. I'm going to destroy this princess of Midianites. I'm going to destroy this Oreb. That everything that is hiding, you are ignorant. You don't know the reason behind your back pain. You don't know the reason behind your leg pain. You don't know the reason behind what is happening in your blood test. You don't know the reason why the finances are not increasing. There is some Oreb and Zeb that is hidden. Take the communion this morning. Receive the divine revelation. Know the dew of heaven is yours. Know the dew of heaven is yours. I'm looking at the time because there is one more powerful revelation. I have so many revelations. You want to, you want to listen or I? <laughs> okay. So there's one more very, very powerful revelation. My heart is not letting me to close without that. Let's read the scripture, the last scripture. The other part I'll continue later. Psalm 133 verse number 3. 133 verse number 3. The dew of heaven is yours. Shall we all read that loud? It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing life forevermore. See, amen. You know, what's the meaning of this? The dew keeps coming on the Mount Hermon. So the psalmist is writing, the dew of God keeps coming on Mount Hermon. He's telling how the dew falls. It falls on the mountains of Zion. The dew on Zion is always full. The mountains of Hermon and the mountains of Zion, the meaning behind it is on this mountain. Have you tried going to any mountain top? In Sozo Farms, I have tried. When I go there, it's, there's a lot of dew on the mountain. It's always foggy and full of mist. And on Mount Zion, it says there is a lot of dew. Throughout 24 bar 7, there is dew. The Bible says, which falls on the mountains of Zion. What is Zion? Forgiven generation. What is Zion? Zion is new covenant church. Zion is you. Mount Sinai and Mount Zion. There are two mountains. Old Testament mountain is Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai represented law. Mount Zion represents the new covenant. Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 19 when God came down, the Bible says the entire mountain trembled and it was shaking. The mountain was full of smoke. The mountain was full of fire. The mountain had so much of smoke like a furnace, like a volcano. And the people trembled because of the fire and smoke and the, the trumpet sound became louder and louder and God spoke from Mount Sinai and people who came near to Mount Sinai they touched and 3,000 people died and on Mount Zion it is the new covenant that is you and I on the new covenant on this mountain there is no fire of God there is no furnace there is no volcano there is no wrath of God because all the wrath of God all the judgment of God 
all of the anger of God was exhausted on the cross of Calvary. Because it was exhausted on the cross of Calvary, today you are the Mount Zion on which the dew of heaven descends 24 bar 7. There is so much of dew that the fire cannot come over there. There is so much of dew. There is no wrath of God that comes over there. There is so much of dew. You are forgiven forever. There is so much of dew upon you. You are Mount Zion where 3,000 people touched and they got the fire baptism. The spirit of God came upon them. They didn't die this time. This time they got special anointing of the Lord. Today you are Mount Zion. You have the dew of heaven 24 bar 7. Can you say the dew of heaven is mine? I am Mount Zion. Repeat, I am Mount Zion. The dew of heaven is mine. The dew of heaven is mine. Because of Jesus. Because Jesus stood cursed. All of God's judgment, all of God's fire came. But this time, the offering was not consumed, as always. This time, the offering was roasted, yet survived the fire of God. Amen. This Lent season, this Good Friday season, remember the offering. Remember the sacrifice. Because of Jesus, the fire of God, the wrath of God is exhausted. So today... There is no anger of God against you. Forever he is in love with you. Because the dew of heaven is so much on Mount Zion. You can come boldly and say dew of heaven is mine. And what God says, there I commanded the blessing of life forevermore. Where is the blessing? The one who has the dew of heaven. Covenant blessing. There. Where is there? The one who is in Christ Jesus. There the blessings of eternal life. There I have commanded the blessing. Amen. There God has commanded the blessing. Those of you who have not received the dew of heaven. Come to Mount Zion. Don't be in law. Don't be in Mount Sinai. Come to Mount Zion. There God has commanded 24 bar 7 dew upon your life. Receive the knowledge. Receive divine revelation. And destroy Oreb and Zeb in your life. Let's lift our hands and thank the Lord. And say thank you daddy God. Thank you daddy God for Mount Zion. Thank you for this anointing. Thank you for the anointing that is flowing. Thank you for the revelation that is flowing. Thank you daddy God. We remember. We remember the season. This season we remember. Remember, Daddy God, we remember every day of our life. We remember the cross of Calvary. We remember because of Jesus, dew of heaven is mine. Wisdom is mine. Church, repeat after me. Dew of heaven is mine. Wisdom is mine. Revelation is mine. Rema word is mine. Knowledge of God is mine. Understanding is mine. I receive the dew of heaven. And I will reign in life. Amen. Let's blow the shofar this morning. So let's all receive the dew of heaven. The spoken word of God. The Lord has blessed you. The Lord has lifted his countenance on you. The Lord is gracious to you. You shall always be the head and not the tail. You shall always be above and never below. You shall lend and shall never borrow. Whatsoever your hand does, it shall prosper. Your children are mighty in the land. Because of the blowing of Shofar, no Jericho wall, no Midianite, no Red Sea will ever stand before you. You shall enter your promised land. The divine revelation, the Rema word, the dew of heaven is yours. Because Christ is in you, you are becoming stronger, younger, healthier and more beautiful for the glory of the Lord. The love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit is always with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. Christ is in you. You can be a blessing by partnering with Priya Abraham Ministries to share this good news. To partner, visit priyaabraham.org slash partner.